Yeah, it's funny angling when you look back on it. I do a lot of writing, as most of you probably know. Probably almost be classed as a writer, I suppose. So you get that different perspective on stuff that happens because you get to review it and, and sort of write it all down. Um, and so much in carp fishing is good planning, good angling, really. But there's a huge amount of it, which is just blind luck, really. More than luck. I suppose, in a way, you could almost call it fate. A bit like that film, you've seen that film Sliding Doors, where a guy gets on the train, or girl, can't remember which, somebody gets on the train, life goes in one direction, other half of the film misses the train, life goes in a different direction. Them little snap decisions that you make that can change everything. I remember, it was only about three years ago, I suppose, getting towards winter, I think it was sort of October time. I'd been on Black Swan over at Dinton, uh, been on there all summer. It was getting to a sort of a natural close. It's a long way to go for me as well. Um, and I wanted to start, you know, find myself somewhere to fish for the winter. And I dotted about, I fished here, I fished there. And I ended up, I was over a sort of Northampton, Bedfordshire border on this little estate lake. I'd fished it before. Um, I was there as a guest, I'd sorted out a ticket for it. And I just suddenly thought, I was sat there, middle of the afternoon, and I thought, I don't fancy this for the winter. I've done it once before, it was too small wasn't really what I wanted. And I just packed my gear up, threw it in the motor, picked up the phone, and I phoned up the guy that runs Monk's Pit, uh, where I'd also fished in a winter previous, and said, is there any chance I can go down there for a couple of trips? And he said, yeah, 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 crack on. I had about, oh, I don't know, three hours till dark, I suppose, and I was driving, well, I've been at Monk's plenty of times. I was driving from somewhere. I'd never driven from that direction before. Um, basically, I got lost completely and utterly and hopelessly lost. I'm driving along, I knew it was close, I knew it was close, but didn't know exactly where it was. And I looked out the window and I saw a church and I recognised the spire. And I thought, that's the church I cast at from the middle of what we call the Rocky Bank. There's a swim there uh, called the Rota, which used to be my favourite. And I see this church and I thought, that's my back marker. Um, so I just sort of headed, every time there was a turn in towards the church, I went through, went to still through it, see it through the trees, eventually, got close enough to think, ah, oh, I know where I am. So I anyway, pulled up in the car park. I hadn't been here for a, a year, maybe two years. Loaded up the barra, walked round the rocky bank. Didn't know where to fish or what had been happening or anything. Looking across, I could see the church spire and I thought, it'd be wrong really, wouldn't it, not to go in the swim that has that church spire as a back marker. That'd be my sort of, my guiding light to get me to the lake from being lost. So I went in the road to swim, I'd, by now I'd got half an hour before dark, chucked them out, put one straight at the church spire, dump, down it went. Went next door and I was chatting to a guy called Perry who was fishing next door. Sitting having a brew and chatting away and he said, oh yeah, you know, obviously, see so you back down. What, I thought you'd had most of them. And I said, yeah, but there's, there's a couple of fish in here, big fish um, that I haven't caught. I never caught the big one. Uh, and there was another fish called Moonscale, which was about 40, 41 pound, which I hadn't caught. And he said to me, what about the Hartford fish? Now, I was like, I'd never heard of the Hartford fish. Well, I'd fished there, it just hadn't come up in conversation. He said, it's one of the old originals, um, sort of pre-Simo, I, I don't know where they came from, King George, I think, Resi. Old, proper old fish, big fish. He said, it's sort of, uh, mid-40. Um, and I was, well, okay, I'll, I'll you know, put that on my list. And I asked him to describe it, and he said, you know, one side's, very dark, sort of reddy brown, and the other side's two-tone, and it was a short, dumb, big, stocky sort of, you know, proper brute of a fish. He said, but it's very noticeable, because it's got this two-tone side. Anyway, we chatted for a while, and I wandered back next door, got my head down. I mean, the next morning, got up early, made a cup of tea, and I'm looking out across the lake, and right in line with the church, I see this fish just come up like that. Big fish, woof, right over the top of my bait. I reckon it just about had time to hit the bottom and that rod just lifted up, whack, I was away. Hit into it, heavy fish, played it for a bit, went round to my right and got rammed up in a big load of weed. It's very, very weedy lake, Monks. Um, so I got the boat, life jacket, went out there, following it out, gin clear, and it's probably about 16 foot deep where this fish is. Weed comes up about 10 foot, so you've got six foot clear over the top. And I'm pulling and pulling, I can't see the fish, just the weed and the line, and eventually, see some boils and woof, come out the top of the weed. So I'm looking down through six foot of gin clear water 
and silhouetted against this huge bed of weed is this massive mirror. And as it turned over, like still six, seven foot down, sort of boiled under the surface, I see this two-tone side. <laughs> and I knew, I'd never seen this fish, I didn't even know it existed. And I looked down there and I knew straight away, I thought this is the one that Perry was talking about. This is the Hartford fish. Uh, managed to get it up and netted it, got it back to the bank. Long story short, 43 pounds. Now, less than 24 hours before, I had no intention of fishing monks. I didn't even know this fish existed. Eight hours before, I found out of its existence and what it looked like, and there I was the next morning holding it up for the camera. And it just shows you those little tiny decisions and little twists of fate, how they can pan out. And as it ended up, I decided to fish there the whole winter and I had my best ever winter. I had 76 carp out of there uh, and managed to keep them going on bait. I was pumping in chop um, mainline hybrid, I think it was at the time, it might be cell. I think it was a hybrid when we were first testing that. Um, and usually monks is a bit of a maggot and zig water in the winter, but I managed to keep them going on a mix of chops uh, and hemp right the way through. And that's how I had 76 fish by the end of the winter all on just that one little twist of fate and the church spire.